How could Adam and Eve be the mother and father of everyone on earth today? Where would dark-skinned people and light-skinned people have come from? Tower of Babel and the Races, today on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. I'm Calvin Smith. And I'm Richard Fangrad. Creation Magazine Live is a program that gives you a summary of the kind of information that you find in Creation Magazine. So today we're going to talk about a subject that I don't think I've ever heard a pastor actually uh, teach about, right. the, the, the Tower of Babel uh, in, in church. I don't, I don't know. What, what's your experience with that? I, yeah, same thing. I haven't heard of, uh, of a... I can't remember a sermon on the Tower of Babel. I don't know, maybe it's, it's difficult to come up with sermon material from that particular event. Right. Well, for us creationists, of course, it's, it's kind of like a key. Similar to how Noah's flood is kind of like a key to understanding the age of the earth right. issue and uh, these questions that we get. Of course, we're going to be talking about that. We're going to have two programs upcoming about that, That's right. that topic, so people can tune in for that. But I think the Tower of Babel really unlocks uh, some answers to questions we get all the time as we're was we're speaking about you know where did Cain get his wife and, and these types of things right. I'm sure things you've like, gotten uh, and, and and going on from there where did the different people groups come from often right. called races right with the uh, um, different skin colors and so on right like we, how come if, some people have light skin and some people have dark skin and, yeah legitimate question right if right. the Bible says we all go back through the event of the Tower of Babel back to Noah and originally back to Adam. People are asking, well, how come right. there's there's people with light skin, like like we kind of have light skin, yeah. and then there's people with very dark skin mm -hmm. and, and different eye shape and hair color and so on. These are legitimate questions. Right. We want to look at that. And of course, growing up uh, outside the church, uh, what I'd been taught, of course, is the theory of evolution. Of course, they have a very particular way of explaining that uh, information, and, right. and it was evolution, of course. That uh, pi different people groups, you know, we descended back to the apes, and and perhaps that's why we've got dark skin and light skin. And what about the ape men? And these are the kind of yeah, things. They have be a way of explaining that. What we also want to cover is um, is things that stem off from racism mm. and that come from that. Uh, things like uh, uh, the Nazis were involved in, in uh, eugenics, eugenics, those types things of things like that. And we'll do all of that on the show today. Belief in evolution has prompted a search for missing links to bolster the idea that man has evolved from ape-like creatures. This has led to some colossal scientific errors, one of which was Nebraska man. Evidence found in 1922 was proclaimed to belong to the first man-like ape of America. The Illustrated London News printed a picture of the ape man showing the shape of his body, head, nose, ears, the amount of hair he had, his wife, domestic animals and tools. And what was the evidence for the illustration? A single tooth. And not just any tooth, but the tooth of a pig. Creation Ministries International staff many from a wide variety of scientific disciplines have produced thousands of articles now available in a massive online database. www.creationontheweb.org has grown to become the world's most powerful internet resource on the creation evolution issue. There are more than 5,000 articles already online and new articles are added daily. Some of the topics covered include the feasibility of Noah's Ark and the evidence for a global flood the age of the earth from both the Bible and science, scientific arguments against the Big Bang and models that explain observations in astronomy within a young earth time frame, recent discoveries that support dinosaurs fitting with biblical history, and many, many more topics. These thousands of articles are available for free 24 hours a day to anyone on earth with an internet connection. One of the main reasons that CMI built this website is to strengthen the faith of Christians. Genesis is one of the most attacked areas of the Bible. Creationontheweb.org provides logical, scientifically accurate counterattacks in this area. As 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. Got questions? Get answers at creationontheweb.org.
Jesus the Creator. Jesus Christ, who walked the earth 2,000 years ago, is also the Creator of the universe. Colossians 1.16 says, For by Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by Him and for Him. Also in John 1.3 we read, All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Jesus Christ is the Creator God. Not only does Scripture confirm it, but during His earthly ministry, Jesus did things only the Creator God could do. Okay, so if we're going to be talking about uh, Babel and the races or the nations, and it, we should really establish what the Bible says clearly right up That's front. A That's start. a really good place to start <laughs> for us. And then we can delve into some of the scientific issues and some of the objections and, and those types of things. But let's let's make it very clear as to what the, the scripture actually says right. about, uh, you know, did God create two people? Did he create, a, you know, other people? That, okay, because that, that, that notion is out there, right? God, it maybe is. Maybe God originally created the different people groups or, or right. we can say races. We should talk later, but you know, we don't really want to use the term races. Right. It's an evolutionary idea, but uh, maybe God created different types. So let's, what does the Bible say? Exactly. So let's go to uh, scripture here, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. And it says, so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. So there was a first man. First man, okay. And that, that's clearly right. established. Then we skip over to Genesis 3, 20. And Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. Okay, so th there, was, there was the first man and no other. Right. Because all people came from Adam and Eve. Eve would become the mother of all living. Exactly. Okay, so no other people groups. Right. right. Now that's obviously uh, very clear, but it even gets clearer here in Acts 17, 26. From one man, this is Paul speaking to the Greeks, he says, from one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. So obviously scripture interprets scripture. What do we have here? We've got, there is a one, one man. Eve is created from his side. She's the mother of all living. And of course, through the seed of the, the first Adam, you've got every nation of men. Yeah, and Paul knew that history. He knew that all the nations go back. He, he understood the event of the Tower of Babel. That's where all the nations came from. Right. So it's very clear. There's really no loopholes for Christians who are trying to, um, you know, bend what Scripture says because perhaps they've believed in different theories or whatever like that, and they're trying to, you know, make the, the Scripture say something different. It's very right, clear. Right, right. Pretty clear, clear. yeah. So why is this important? Well, um, one of the, the topics that always comes up when I'm doing Q&A or very often is the concept of where, does Cain, where did Cain get his wife? If Adam right. and Eve are the mother and father of all people, um, you know, they have many children, but uh, we've got Cain kills Abel, Cain has a wife, where did she come from? And, and I'm going to give you a, a specific example from um, actually an occult source, you know, the Wiccans, the, the witches. Um, and, and this is from a, a quote from Silver Ravenwolf. I'm sure that was her given name. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. She, she, she's posing this question because what she's done is she's written a book and she's, she's teaching her witches to... Uh, proselytize, witness to Christian kids in, in high schools. So Silver Ravenwolf is one of the leaders of this of this religion, the right. Wicca witches. That's right. Wicca. And this is the way it's posed to, to, to kids. Um, this is out of her book. She says, here's one that will really get them rolling. If you're lucky, it'll at least get them thinking. In the Bible it says that Cain slew Abel, then left his parents Adam and Eve and went to the land of Nod. Uh, there he married a girl of another tribe. If Adam and Eve were the first humans, who or what did Cain marry? An antelope, a cheetah? He had children, so I guess he picked a woman. She couldn't have been from uh, Adam and Eve's daughter stolen from the Garden of Eden Hospital because we'd all be insane by now. Genetics have taught us a great deal in the last hundred years, particularly the fact that you can't intermarry. After a few generations, the genes will break down and produce sickly or insane children. So see how she's setting this up here. You, you go and you ask the Christians, where did Cain get his wife? He couldn't have married a sister because we'd be insane by now. So they're using art, uh, arguments from genetics to take away the legitimacy of the Bible and then promote their own religion. Right, yeah. So uh, uh, there's, there's some truth in here, but there's also some fabrication. Yeah, you, there's you, some legitimate questions, right? Right. It, it, what, what about close relations marrying? You get problems in the offspring, that's genetic defects and so on. So. Right, right. Uh, now one thing that was misquoted there is the fact that you know, Cain went to the land of Nod and got a wife. Now he already had a wife, he knew his wife in the biblical sense. Yeah, uh, she also said from another tribe. Well, there weren't other people groups. So. Right, right. So how do we explain this? Well, 
of course, uh, today, of course, you, you can't marry someone that's a close relative, or you can, but the risk is that you're going to have birth defects, right? But in the beginning, it would have been different. Because if you really uh, examine, we've talked about you know genetic mutation and stuff like that. This is what the genetics are doing today. They're actually increasing. We're having increased mutations and stuff in like that. Increased mutations over time, right? Right. Yeah. So if you go back in time, they're better, 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 better. In the beginning, everything is very good. No mutations. No mutations. Right. So what does that mean? Well, if we look in uh, Leviticus 18:6, uh, this is where God gives a commandment: No longer should there be any close marriage. But okay, that was quite a long time after creation. That's wasn't a it? very long time. If you actually look at the timeline here, we've got 2,500 years from the, the creation to when this uh, is given. So that means Cain could have married a sister. Can you marry your relative? According to the Bible, all people on Earth go back to Noah's family, and before that, back to Adam and Eve. Since we all are ultimately the descendants of the same parents, all people are related. You have to marry your relative. If you don't, you marry something that isn't human. Of course today, we don't marry our close relatives for legal and biological reasons. We marry someone further away in relation to us. Now did you get that? Just before the break we said that Cain would have married his sister. And mo most of you are probably going, oh, you know, uh, uh, that, um, can, can we do that? Look, all people are related, right? Mm. We all go back to the Tower of Babel, back to Noah and back to Adam and Eve. So all people are related anyways. You have to marry one of your relations. The point that we were making is today you don't marry a relation that's close to you because you'll have mutations at the same location, right. marry someone further away. Hopefully you'll ha they'll have m mutations elsewhere and your good information will overwrite their bad and vice versa. Right, you get half your kids. DNA from mom, half your DNA from dad. The closer related you are, chances are those mutations, if they, they're going to be the same and you're going to have problems. Right. right. Okay. So we're going to go to a, uh, a quote here from a, I believe a very confused person. <laughs> and maybe the quote will explain that. Oh yeah. Um, this is from a, a person who calls himself a uh, uh, this is Reverend Jerry Stevenson. He calls himself a gay Christian fundamentalist. He's the founder of Grace Institute Bible College and Seminary in Ocala in, in How Florida. How can you be a fundamentalist and, and, and be a gay Well, Anyway, that's anyway, why I said... He said he was confused. Right. Well, let's look at the quote here. He says, something had to happen for there to be black people, white people, Chinese people, Indian people, Stevenson said. They all didn't just stem from Adam and Eve. It's the same goes for sexual orientation. He said, we believe in the Adam and Eve story. We also believe in the Adam and Steve story. Okay, so what's happening here? He can't understand from what scripture plainly says and from what modern genetics have told us how we, we got these people. Where groups. the different skin colors now, he, come he, from. He's yeah. actually brought that into, of course, the, the, the whole idea of sexual orientation. But, you know, he, he says we believe in the Adam and Steve story. Well, that's extra biblical. You, you don't find the Adam and Steve story. You find the Adam and Eve story. Yeah. And so he's taking these concepts and trying to morph them together and trying to understand what's going on, which is common. There's many people that just, you know, can't understand these things. So. Here's a picture of the different, uh, I guess what we call uh, skin colors or, or stuff. And people need to understand, of course, you, you've got different, uh, there's two types of melanin that make up the, what we call skin colors, right? And melanin is a type of pigment that you have in your skin. Exactly. So different people have different levels of, of, of the, this, this uh, pigment. So people are wondering, how could you get dark skin and light skin people from, from one original source? Well, here's a very interesting picture that was in our Creation magazine. I, I love showing this to people when they ask me these questions. Well, because it really makes the lights come on, doesn't it? It does. You've, it got, does. A, you've got here a middle brown couple. They have twin girls. Yeah. One looks like they're, you know, right from jolly old England, you know, yeah. blonde hair, <laughs> blue eyes, that kind of thing. And, and the other, very dark skin, dark eyes. Right. And they're twins from a middle brown couple. In one generation, you've got dark and light. Yes. The peop people are often ask, well, is that Photoshopped? Or, no, this is a real, <laughs> a real set of twins that were born. It's a really neat picture. Of course, we cr covered this in Creation Magazine. Yeah. So you and can there's understand. there's the genetics and how that happens. It's actually easy to understand, the genetics. It's very easy to understand. Um, and of course, we've seen this before. Here's a different article. I have a twin sister who's black. This is from uh, the Daily Mail in London. So uh, this has happened several times. This isn't just a one-off event. And so if, if you can kind of understand a little bit about genetics, you know, if you're taking a genetics class, they often use a capital A, uh, you know, lowercase yeah, yeah, a to... The Punnett square and that kind of it, thing. To symbolize genetic yeah. information and stuff. So if you apply that to, let's say, melanin, 
and, and, and you're, you're uh, inheriting two different uh, um, types of melanin from mom and dad and, and this different amounts of genetic information. If Adam and Eve were middle brown skinned people, just like that couple we showed, um, then you could have you know, the, the offspring inheriting different, um, different levels of, of, of right. that genetic information. So you could go from very dark to very light and all the way in between, most would be middle brown uh, it's very, actually, very easy to understand. Yeah, and, and I mean, the diagram shows how the information can be broken up here. You've got right. big A, little a, big B, little b in both mom and dad, and you can see there in the offspring how that's broken up. If that big A and little a, if those relate to the pigment, the amount of melanin, the pigment in the skin, yep. it's easy to understand how you can have, Adam and Eve, if they were middle brown, they could have had a whole range of very, very light skin, blonde right. hair, blue eyes. They wouldn't have been Caucasians or very dark skinned people because then you wouldn't have had the other information for the other. Right, right. right. And that, so that makes the most sense that they were middle brown then, Adam and Eve, right? Right. A lot of right. children's Bibles. You know, yeah, it, it, <laughs> the Caucasian Adam and Eve. Yeah. Um, and, and we can understand this. Is, this, of course, we talked about skin colors, but you can look at eye shapes, the same type of thing. The Asian eye shape, for example, is just a, a double layer of fat in the... In the um, yeah, and it in closes down the eye, produces that almond-shaped eye a little bit. Right. So uh, we're going to take a look at this even more and see how uh, these different characteristics could be, could be caused by, by two people. Creation Ministries International staff, many from a wide variety of scientific disciplines, have produced thousands of articles now available in a massive online database. www.creationontheweb.org has grown to become the world's most powerful internet resource on the creation evolution issue. There are more than 5,000 articles already online and new articles are added daily. Some of the topics covered include the feasibility of Noah's Ark and the evidence for a global flood, the age of the earth from both the Bible and science, scientific arguments against the Big Bang and models that explain observations in astronomy within a young earth time frame, recent discoveries that support dinosaurs fitting with biblical history, and many, many more topics. These thousands of articles are available for free 24 hours a day to anyone on earth with an internet connection. One of the main reasons that CMI built this website is to strengthen the faith of Christians. Genesis is one of the most attacked areas of the Bible. Creationontheweb.org provides logical, scientifically accurate counterattacks in this area. As 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. Got questions? Get answers at creationontheweb.org. So what we were talking about before the break is how, if Adam and Eve started with all the genetic information in the beginning, you could start splitting that up and all the different racial characteristics, I guess we'd, we'd call today, um, they could all stem from that original source. Right. And uh, here's a, an interesting picture here, a lady of distinction. Because uh, what you often see is in the different racial groups, and of course we call them people groups, what you'll often see is a blend that will pop up every now and then. You'll see one, uh, you know, certain race or whatever, but they'll have another element in there. And like here you, you see, see here, yeah. Yeah, she's got very dark skin from Africa, but she's got that almond eye shape, what we would call the Asian eye shape. Right. It's very yeah. interesting. So what do scientists actually say about uh, how many different races there are now? Well, here's a Natalie Anger. Um, she's writing in a, an article here, Do Races Differ? And this is what she said. Scientists at the National Institute of Health recently announced that they had put together a draft of the entire sequence of the human genome. That's a huge project, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and the researchers had unanimously declared there's only one race, the human race. So what modern science is actually showing is what the Bible has been saying for <laughs> quite some yeah. time. Of course, when I was in school, I got taught something far different. And, and here's some pictures. Yeah, like most of us. <laughs> like most of us, yeah. Um, here's some pictures from, uh, from Time Life books. Some of you might have seen this. This was produced in 1966, the year I was born. And here we can see this is, they're, they're saying, here's where the people groups come from. And what they're, they're clearly showing is, you know, there was a common ancestor, an ape-like creature, and from there all the different branches of humanity come. So we've got Caucasians and Mongoloids and, uh, you know, dark-skinned people, all that, that kind of thing. This is what I was taught, basically as fact in school. And, uh, you know, people need to, to, to put this in perspective. You know, they're always looking for the missing link, right? Eight men, eight people. If right. you believe in evolution, yep. that must have occurred. But you know, what, what are creationists saying? These ape-like people were either finding apes 
or variations of people. You know, and so here's a here's a game. Here's some images that I show when I'm I'm presenting, just to get get people an idea. And I'll show show that picture, and I'll say, well, what do you think that is? And people will call out, and of course, uh, eventually they'll get around to say, well, it looks kind of like a dog. And I'll I'll yeah, try to trick yeah. them, and I'll say, well, what do you think this is? You know, this is this is something a little harder. And I'll get all <laughs> sorts of you know, it's a bat, it's a warthog or whatever. And I pop up the the answer there, and people are amazed. A chihuahua? Well, that's a dog. Yeah, well, it's a variation yeah. of the dog kind. And then I pop that one up, and I can never fool them three times, and they understand it's a bulldog, right? <laughs> so he here's three different variations of the same kind, vastly yeah, different skull structure. Sure. Right. So then I make the, the comparison. Well, there's a modern human skull. And here's a Neanderthal Looks skull. Looks a lot like that one. Yeah. And here's a Cro-Magnon skull. Right. And the point I'm making is, you know, when we see variations within the kind, you know, for the evolutionists, they're, they're looking at changes from one kind to another kind over millions of years. We're just saying, no, there's variation among the created kind. And God, they all lived at the same time. They all lived at the same time, and, and, and it's easy for people to understand. You know, here's a picture of Robert Wadlow. Look at, look at this. Yes. <laughs> the tallest man we've ever had on film. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Here's a picture of him with his family. <laughs> Amazing, just how, how tall he was. But on the other hand, the other end of the scale, here's the, uh, the shortest woman we've ever captured on film. Lucia Zarati, she's 26 and a half inches tall. And, and you know, some, some smaller people today, you know, their proportions are, you know, out a little bit. She just looks like a regular yeah. woman, just shrunk down. And, and nobody would begin to suggest that those two extremes aren't human. Exactly. They're still human. It's variation within the human kind. That's right. So in this picture, you see the extreme variations between humankind and the extreme variations between the dog kind, but they're all the same kind, the same created right. kind. So really, we need to understand that your beliefs about origins or the way you look at the evidence really comes into play here. Are there missing links? Or is there just variations within the kind? If you believe in evolution, you, you must look for those missing links. They've they got to be around here somewhere. The, the ape-like creatures must have turned into people. <laughs> they've got to be there. And that's, I mean, that's the, real, the real challenge for evolution, right? Where, where are these missing links? How do you find them? But as it relates to our topic today, we're looking for that kind of variation in the human kind. Now, we'll, in a few minutes, we'll look at the, uh, the ape men as well. Are, are there different kinds of humans? And uh, uh, we'll look at some ape men hoaxes, actually, in a few moments. That's right. Some Christians believe that evolution should not be taught in public schools. Creation Ministries isn't against the teaching of evolution. However, it should be taught warts and all. That is, not only the evidence for it, but the growing evidence against it. Currently, evidence against evolution is censored so that students hear only the case for it. Proverbs 18.17 says, The one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines him. When evolution is taught along with all of its scientific problems, many people reject it. Any scientific theory should be able to withstand close and honest scrutiny. But evolutionists lobby hard to keep any evidence against evolution out of the classroom. Now we're talking specifically about uh, the different races, where the different races came from, and variation within the human kind. We gave some examples there before the break. But uh, a question that does come up is, what about ape men? <laughs> what about... Uh, these, these people groups that supposedly evolved from some prior, uh, uh, like an ape-like creature, to become humans. Wh what do we think as creationists? What, what do right. creation scientists think about uh, the ape men? Well, uh, not only what we think, what are the evolutionists saying, and what do we think about that, right? right? Just because to explain it, yeah, yeah. Because when I was growing up, of course, uh, you know, I believed in the theory of evolution, so you'd read these books, and they'd be talking about things like Neanderthal man. Right, and we found skulls of Neanderthals. What, what's classified yeah, as Neanderthals? They were a lower order of people that, yep. that went extinct, and then we came along. Right, something like that. So you know, here's a picture of uh, of Neanderthal as was originally taught. You know, they were kind of stooped over and big eye bridges and hairy, brutish creatures and stuff like that. Well, with modern forensics now, we found out you know these people were suffering from vitamin D deficiency and bone diseases and, and, and things like that. They've actually uh, modified the, the image of uh, Neanderthal now. And they said that they, mo many scientists believe they could have interbred with people. Well, what does that mean? They're people, <laughs> right? Because there's genetic barriers between... Uh, Pretty much, yeah. Right? And so they've come up with new uh, images of uh, Neanderthal now. And here's one of the, the latest ones that I found. And they so the original Neanderthals that, that were Neander Valley in Germany, the, yep. the first specimen that was found, a lot of 
a, a lot of uh, distorted bones. So these right. bone diseases that you mentioned, it uh, it didn't the, the diseases apparently uh, didn't allow their bones to harden properly. So right. through activity and, and eating tough meat, that kind of thing, it'll it'll deform the bones over time. Right. Different ways of explaining these, uh, you know particular features I guess right and, and so now the the modern I mean let's face it you can go downtown Toronto and you can see people with all variations of different looks and, and, and stuff like that we see people today with these Neanderthal features they're still in the in, in the genetic makeup of, pretty of, much of, like we do right <laughs> now what's interesting though is in an effort to bolster the theory of evolution there there have been many what what would be called hoaxes outright hoaxes, uh, you know, uh, promoting these, these eight-man theories. For example, um, Nebraska Man. Here's a picture, and this was on the front page of a prominent London newspaper way back when it was first uh, discovered. I think it was like 1912. And uh, they called it Nebraska Man. There was some evidence found in the United States. It was so compelling, they, they drew this picture. You see the ape man, the ape woman. You know, and the fauna and the flora and what was going on at the time. and yeah, the tools that, the that they're using and, and that kind of thing. But the actual evidence they found was one tooth. This is well documented, folks. You, you can check this out. This whole Nebraska man, ape man thing came from the tooth of actually a pig. They found out four years after that it wasn't an ape or a human at all. It was a pig. An extinct pig, nonetheless. Ex that's right. <laughs> well, uh, what else? Uh, well, this was very common, of course, Piltdown Man. Now, evolutionists are kind of annoyed sometimes when we're talking about Piltdown Man because everyone knows it was a, it's a hoax. But the reason we point it out is that for over 40 years, in textbooks. Students would go, they'd go to school, and, and Piltdown Man was promoted as an evolutionary ancestor. And, you know, it, when they finally re-examined the evidence, 40 years after they first found it, they found it was a skull cap of a human and an orangutan's jaw stuck together. I mean, this is a, a fraud. So we've, we've, got, we've got a hoax, Neand uh, Neand uh, Nebraska Man is, is based on a pig's tooth, yeah. and Neanderthals were probably humans that came after the Tower of Babel. Right. So that's how we would explain uh, some of these different people groups. Exactly. Variation within the humankind. Now we've got a video that we're going to show right now and it's from one of our uh, speakers in Australia, um, Dr. Don Batten. Don Batten yes. And he's got a whole DVD that you can uh, look at on ape men and, ape and hoaxes and, and, and what the evidence actually shows. So let's show that clip right now and we'll be back. Uh, and then we come to uh, Artipithecus ramidus cadaver. That's a mouthful, isn't it? And uh, what do we find here? We've got all these, well, this is more bones here anyway. This is a more impressive looking bunch of bones. Uh, this is uh, the year 2001 uh, in Ethiopia. These bones were found. And when you read the paper carefully, uh, you find that uh, the hominid or ape man status was claimed on the basis of a single bone, a single toe bone actually up there. So, but hang on, there's six bones there. No, actually, there's only one bone. The one bone is uh, photographed from three different uh, aspects, that's okay. But then they also drew the bone from three different aspects. So yes, it's sort of a superficial reading of the paper. It looks like there's twice as much stuff there as there really is. This toe bone was actually found 18 kilometres from the rest of the material. Now, it, it actually gets worse. The, 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 other, the other, lot, other four lots of material were collected over locations spread over an arc 15 kilometres long. This guy must have been the first terrorist bomber. <laughs> and he was holding a hydrogen bomb when he went off. And one evolutionist, in fact, said, few sciences produce such abundant returns from so few fragments of fact as paleontology. That's, uh, I can't, can hardly agree more. One blood. Racism. Although we live in a so-called progressive and enlightened world, racist attitudes still rear their ugly heads all too often. The last 100 years have seen millions of people wiped out, victims of genocide based on the shade of their skin or other cultural differences. Today, many people still judge others by how much pigment their skin has. What does the Bible say about this devastating issue, and what does the origins issue have to do with it? This book meets the racism issue plaguing our modern society head on, addressing issues such as the origin of different skin colors, the origin of the nations, the curse of Ham, and the influence of humanism and evolution on the racist attitudes of the day. This book gives vital insight into the subjects raised. Recommended for anyone dealing with racism or seeking to understand the issue in a biblical context.
there's a lot more information on Ape Men. Uh, we just watched the Ape Men video clip. There's a lot more information on Ape Men. We're, we're summarizing here as we right. sit on the show. Uh, in the news, this is the in the news section. What's happening in the news regarding creation evolution? I've got an article here. Statisticians, common ancestor of all humans lived 5,000 years ago. No, huh. this is not from our website. This is, uh, uh, this is from the Associated Press. Uh, a fellow here did this article. A secular article? A secular on? article, yes. Yeah. And it begins, he or she did nothing more remarkable than be born, live, have children, and die. Yet this was the ancestor of every person now living on Earth, the ancestor of every person living on Earth. The last person in history whose family tree branches out to touch all six and a half billion people on the planet today. That means everybody on Earth descends from someone who was around as recently as the reign of Tutankhamun, King Tut. <laughs> wow. That's, that's what it says maybe even during the golden age of ancient Greece. There's even a chance that our last shared ancestor lived at the time of Christ. That was only 2,000 years ago, but wow. they're saying 5,000. It's a, a little elastic it's, there. Yeah. It's a mathematical certainty that the person existed, said science journal, journalist Steve Olson, whose 2002 book, Mapping Human History, traces the history of the species since its origin in Africa more than 100,000 years ago. So that's, that's how the article begins. Later right. on he says, furthermore, Olson and his colleagues have found that if you go back a little farther, about 5,000 to 7,000 years ago, everybody living today has exactly the same set of ancestors. Hmm. How can this be? It's simple math. Every person has two parents, four grandparents, eight great-great-great-grandparents. Right. Keep doubling back through the generation 16, 32, 64, 128, and within a few hundred years you have thousands of ancestors. It's nothing more than exponential growth combined with the facts of life. By the 15th century, you've got a million ancestors. By the 13th, you've got a billion. Sometime around the 9th century, just 40 generations ago, the number tops a trillion. And so there's other things in the article here, but that's just, uh, I mean, it, it just seems to confirm what the Bible is saying, what Paul said there in Acts 17, from one, uh, from one nation, from one man came all the nations. Right. Now, of course, you know, we don't want to get it caught in a situation where if, if secular science agrees with what the Bible says, we, we, we agree with them, but if they disagree with that, we, we, we shy away from it. What we're pointing out here is he's using mathematical models. Right. right? This yeah, isn't that's in, not what we're saying here. Right, yeah. So. This isn't like interpretation, you believe. That. This is just straight math. You can, you can do these equations, you can figure out, that, yeah, we all would have had to come back to, um, to one point. And that's what, what basically the Bible says. Now, to be fair, um, you know, we've heard this stuff before, right? They, what they call mitochondrial Eve, you know, the concept yes. that you can trace. Yes. Now, the that's a slightly different argument based on, based on the, uh, the genetics, the, the part of the, uh, of, of the information in our, in our genes that doesn't change from right. generation to generation. The mitochondrial DNA, and yes. you can trace that through the, through the, the female, yes. uh, female ancestors. And so, but it is, it is interesting how you, they're starting to get closer and closer to the biblical model. Uh, when when they're actually looking at yeah well I mean you know science is the search for truth right whether it's 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 secular or done in a, in a Christian context it is it, we're trying to figure out the world around us right and so you would expect that since the Bible is true and we believe that by faith make no no bones about it right uh, uh, since the Bible is true science should ultimately point in that direction it should actually support it should eventually support what the Bible right. says right observable and or mathematical models should support that because right. it's it's when you start bringing in the well I think this and I the, presuppose the that interpretation of the exactly. data that's where things go a little squirrely right so the concept of mitochondrial Eve then um, we actually did an article on that because there was a study done and they believed that you could trace us all back to this one woman and again the, she was supposedly originated in Africa not to the Middle East where well that's their that's their, their interpretation on, on where that came from but it's, it's interesting I think that they call her Eve mitochondrial right. Eve well, where did that name come from? <laughs> exactly. It's the Bible. Yeah. Now, to be fair also, just so there's no misconceptions, uh, evolutionists don't believe that she was the only woman around at that time. There was other, there was other populations, but you can, we can trace, everybody can trace their ancestors back to that Right, but point. they say that those, those people died out, those, those groups died out, and everybody on Earth came from this mitochondrial Eve, right. the way they call her. Right, right. So evolutionists now, there's actually two camps. And there's the, the 
the Camp A, that's the, we'll say A for Africa. This is actually an article by uh, Dr. Carl Whelan that we had written on our website uh, reporting on this, this evidence of, of, my, of mitochondrial Eve. It's out of Creation Magazine from quite a number of years ago. Yeah, so, yeah. September well, it was, 91. It was actually on the, on the website as well. And uh, so the one camp says that, yeah, they believe every, everybody, all the people groups on, on the planet, so Caucasians and whatever, all the different people groups stem back to this one woman. And then there's another camp that's uh, leaning towards more of what I was taught when I was growing up, and that was that uh, you had a common ancestor and they split off into the different people groups. And that's a, that's a different um, interpretation because then what we would say is that uh, different people groups have evolved at different areas. There's, there's some people who are more human than other people. Of course, that's what Darwin was saying years ago in his, not Origin of Species, but his other books. He was saying that the different races, and he grouped people according to skin color at that point, right. they evolved at different speeds. And, the, and since Darwin was a white man from England, well, you've, uh, you know, there's... Uh, right. The, the, they've evolved the fastest, the, the, the people over in England. Exactly. The white skin and so on. But, the, but the, the Australian Aborigines who have extremely dark skin, they haven't evolved very fast, so they're still closer to the animals. Right. Now we're going to... Imagine how that would lead to racist ideas and the, and the, you know, the class distinctions. And we're going to get into up. that momentarily. Um, but we'll, let, let's just go here from what, what creation-based anthropology would say. If you, if you look at what the Bible says, um, We'd say that all mankind is descended from one woman. That's what we stated right at the first. Right. That's what the evidence seems to be pointing to. That this was not very long ago. Right? That we're young earth creationists. Well, what does the evidence seem to be showing? Um, you can trace this all back to very recently. Yeah. And even right? secular articles, like the one I just read 5,000 years ago, is the number that they came up with. Right. Now, if you want to believe there were other people groups around that time, well, that's up to you. But that's, 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 you don't have any evidence for that, really. And then that all races of all people are very closely related genetically. Well, we we just showed you some quotes from some modern scientists and that's exactly so what it's pointing we've got, to. We've got science confirming what we would take from a plain reading of the scripture. By faith. The way you just summarized it. Yeah, right. By faith, yeah. We, yep. we, I mean, we can throw that in pretty much everything we say. That's right. Yes, we believe the Bible by faith. We look at its history. We believe it by faith. We're not observing that history. We weren't right. there, but we accept that history by faith. Exactly. The evolutionist has their faith position about <laughs> history as well. well. We've only got a short, short time left, but I, th I think it's funny because it isn't hard to come up with creation evolution uh, controversies in the, in the news. What's here, this one? Here was an interesting one. Um, from Fox News, and it says why we are all insane. And it says natural selection wants us to be crazy at least a little bit, while truly uh, debilitating insanity is not nature's intention. Many mental health issues may be byproducts of an overfunctional human brain. So evolution can explain everything. Can explain everything. If God didn't create the sun until day four, how could each of the previous three days have been real days? Although we are not told what the light source was, the Bible says that God created the earth and light on the first day. Thus, we can deduce that on the first three days, the earth was already rotating in space relative to God's created light, enabling a day-night cycle. In the book of Revelation, we read that in the future new heavens and earth there will once again be no need for sun. One of the reasons that the Creation Answers book is one of the most popular creationist books in the world is because it covers a huge range of topics. The Creation Answers book answers more than 60 of the most asked questions about Genesis and the creation evolution issue. Questions like, does God exist? Are the days in Genesis 1 real days? What about carbon dating? How can we see light from stars millions of light years away in a young universe? Where did Cain get his wife? Where did all the water from Noah's flood come from? And where did it go? How did all the animals fit on board Noah's ark? Was there an ice age? Where do dinosaurs fit into the Bible? And many, many more. Published by Creation Ministries International, it has been continually updated for more than two decades as science progresses and we learn more about God's amazing creation. For many people, the Creation Answers book has been a great place to begin learning about the creation evolution issue. 
This book is excellent for Christians struggling with their faith, for students looking for alternatives to evolution, for pastors looking for a summary of the evidences for creation, for evolutionists looking for a clear presentation of creationist thinking. To order your copy, visit www.creationontheweb.org or call the CMI office nearest you. Now we've mentioned, we've hinted at this already just a few minutes ago, the, 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 the racist attitudes that stem from evolutionary theory. Right. That the different races, often grouped by skin color of course, the different races evolved at different speeds, so some are closer to animals. Now this was, we should throw this in here very quickly, uh, modern evolutionists are not racist generally. We should throw that in there. Yeah. But in the past, there have been some horrific things that have been done in the name of evolution right. that's, that, that focused on racism. Here's a, a newspaper article. This is, you can see the date there, February 10th, 1924. Here you have a Stone Age men discovered on Antarctic Island. They have, they've all got dark skin, right. you know? So the idea being they're, they're less evolved than the, the white they're, races. They're this is evolved. what the, the article actually... And there's, there, there's, there's other examples of this uh, on, on our website as well. Mm -hmm. uh, an example that we point to uh, quite a bit is it was done in Creation Magazine a number of years ago. Um, here's Ota Benga. And uh, he was put on display in a cage in a zoo in what was the, the Bronx or something, mm -hmm. right? In New York. He was brought over from... Uh, from another country, brought into a zoo, so people could see, oh look, here's something like a missing link, something right. on its way to becoming human. They actually put him on display with apes as, as an example of a missing link. Here's the ape, here's this person, and then modern humans. So yes. It's really horrible thing. And as we move forward in time, we hinted this, uh, at this already, uh, Hitler, in his, his ideas about people with dark skin, the, the black people, uh, people of different races or and so Or the Jewish on. people, they were subhuman. This is what the propaganda right. films would commonly show, they and, were subhuman. And historians have looked back at what Hitler did at, at, at the Second World War, the 1940s and so on, yeah. and they said Hitler was consistent with his evolutionary views. Yes, and as a matter of fact, I've read large portions of Mein Kampf, Hitler's book Mein Kampf, and you can see his, his evolutionary Darwin. He wanted Darwin. to dedicate that book to Darwin, didn't he? That's right. You know. Um, now, some people think, well, okay, well, that was back then, and, and they're quite apologetic about that. Right. But what's you know, happening today? What's happening today is is uh, <laughs> quite shocking, actually. Here's a picture of uh, of a book written by J. Philip Rushton. Now, he's a professor of psychology at the University of Western Ontario. He wrote this book in 1997. Let's let's look at uh, some of the things he said. This is actually being commented on by Professor Barry Mailer, commenting on Rushton's book. This is what uh, he said. Blacks, according to Russian, have larger genitals, making them more promiscuous, smaller brains, making them less intelligent than whites and Asians. Using 60 different measures, Rushton ranks the races along an evolutionary scale, with blacks at the bottom and Asians at the top. This is a professor, 1997, in Ontario, Canada. I mean, that's, that's shocking. So this is happening today. Yep, and uh, there's the, the reference there. I mean, we need to think about something. If we, we're teaching our children that we all come from animals, from apes, basically, you know, this is our evolutionary past. Right. And, and, and there are different people groups evolving at different levels, and then we're wondering why there's racist attitudes. We, we really shouldn't be shocked. I mean, you, you look at Europe, and they're always talking about, well, look at, look at the soccer teams, and, you know, there's racial right, right. things. Right, a more recent example, isn't it? A very recent example. Um, you know, here's a picture of a couple of soccer players obviously having a, an argument, and, uh, but this, this comes from an ABC Sports article. Here's what it said. Several black England players were subjected to monkey noises from the crowd during the 1-0 defeat at the Bernabeu Stadium on November. Monkey noises. And... Uh, it continued to said, why was Spanish soccer player Robert Carlos recently greeted with cheers of monkey noises from Spanish fans as he played a game? Because Carlos is brown, not Caucasian. Soccer, the world's most popular sport, is again revealing what some consider a basic Caucasian and European mindset. The world's people of color are subhuman. Now, where does that concept come from? And if you're, if you're taking the Bible consistently, you, you wouldn't get that. You would I mean, not all get people that. go back to the Tower of Babel. There are Christians who are racist. We, we can right. let's admit that, but they're not being consistent with that history that's there in the Bible. Right, and that's the thing to point out. It's it, it's if someone is racist and they believe in evolution that different people groups have evolved on different, they're being consistent. They're being consistent you, you can say they're not they being right, or, or yes. you know that's not nice or whatever you want, but it's still consistent. Whereas the Christian who's a racist 
That's inconsistent with scripture. Right. You can't find it there. And so, you know, I'm sure we've all seen this famous, you know, monkey to man sequence. People wear it on their t-shirts and, and all this kind of stuff. But let's look at it. On the left-hand side, you've got dark-skinned apes. On the right-hand side, you've got Caucasians. They get lighter and lighter as you, so as you get more evolved. When a white person's going, hoo, 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 to a, a darker-skinned person, he's basically saying, you're closer to an ape. According to the Bible, Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel, and then Cain went somewhere and found a wife. Where did she come from? Genesis 3 verse 20 says that Eve was the mother of all living, and Genesis 5 verse 4 says that Adam and Eve had other sons and daughters, so Cain would have married one of his sisters. But this answer raises other questions. The law against close intermarriage did not come until the time of Moses. Biological problems in their children were also not a problem at that time, since the genetic mutations that cause problems increase over time. In the beginning, God created the genes with no mutations. For more details, go to creationontheweb.com and search on Cain's wife. So how do we get the different skin colors from one group of people that lived at the Tower of Babel. Well, at the time of the Tower of Babel, God confused the languages. Mm. That, that acted as barriers between the different people groups. So the different people groups migrate away from Babel to different climate areas and don't mix, within, don't mix with each other. They're because small. you can't talk to each other. You, you can't, can't understand what they're saying. That's right. <laughs> so how do the different skin colors come about? Uh, light colored people, light, light, a little bit of pigment, you get people living in the north, north of Babel, north of the Middle East. Why? Because you need sunlight to penetrate your skin to help process vitamin D. It's, it's, it's healthy to do that. So in that area, it's advantageous for the people that have the genetic information for a little bit of pigment. Mm -hmm. The opposite happens when you move south. Right. That's how those skin colors come about as a result of the breakup of the one population, it's called the founder principle in biology, right. into small interbreeding groups that move to different climate areas. Right. It's what natural selection, we covered this in show three, I believe, when right. we natural talked selection. about that. Right. That would favor light-skinned people here. And, but, of course, we do see around the world sometimes that's not always consistent, right? You've got the Inuit living in the north and they're cool. Yeah, yeah and we're, you know, where did they come from? Did they come from a group that was, that was further, uh, right. further south originally? And, and interesting yeah. questions. So, if this is true history, and of course we believe it is, then we should probably see some commonality here. Um, well, maybe you should just summarize what you, what you just said for, for a second here. So wh where did we all come from? Here's a diagram. Of, this is our family tree. We all come from Adam and Eve. Right. They had many sons and daughters. Scripture says that. You get to this bottleneck at the Noah's Flood, flood where yeah, you've got eight people. eight people. And then you've got the Tower of Babel splitting up the different people groups into languages, which then isolate genetics, and then you've got these different people groups. It's a great explanation for what we observe That's right. today. Right? Yeah. And what it means is that all humans are related. We're all brothers and sisters, ultimately. Right. Uh, these differences that separate us, uh, they're really meaningless genetically. Right, right. So, if there is a commonality uh, from all people, and we all share a common history, there should probably be some evidence for that too. And I, I've got sure. some kind of stuff that may be a little different than most people are thinking of. For example, uh, boomerangs. Where do boomerangs come from? Australia. Australia. That's <laughs> what most people would think of, right? And uh, here's a picture um, uh, of a boomerang, uh, but that's from India, the country of India. It's an artifact that they've found there. Well, I thought boomerangs came only from Australia. No, they, apparently at one time Indians had it. Here's some pictures from some boomerangs and some cave drawings from Poland. At one time, people okay. living in Poland shared this. Pretty uh, far away from Australia. It, it is, yeah. And uh, here's some uh, boomerangs, and these are from um, Native North Americans. Okay, and boomerangs so, all over the world then? All over the world. Okay. Isn't that interesting? We've shared that, uh, that technology, if you will. They didn't, you know, it just didn't evolve. So maybe there. somebody at Babel invented a boomerang and then... Uh, and then <laughs> different people took the information. Here's another one. Now, we're going to be talking about this in, in some upcoming uh, shows. In the about, Noah's Flood shows, that's right. Right, about the flood traditions, the fact that all over the world there are people groups that have this story of a great flood. Why would they have a story of a great flood and why all the similarities, and we'll explore this more later, but right. uh, why all the similarities if it wasn't a fact that all those right. people experienced the it's, same thing? It's not just a Bible thing, it's people groups. Here's right. one really briefly. This is uh, Chief Joe Peters from the Micmac in Canada. He says, he caused to be born one man and one woman, and they multiplied and lived a long time, but they became uh, wicked along with their children who killed one another. The sun wept with grief and the rain fell from the heavens with such great abundance 
that the water's mounted even to the summit of the rocks of the highest and most lofty mountains. So that's their origins and flood story. Sounds a lot like what's in a the lot, Bible. Exactly. Yeah. And, and here's another uh, interesting um, piece of evidence. This is uh, the Chinese written language. Of course, they use pictographs, uh, you know, images that they will use different, uh, to make up different words, and then they'll combine them together to make sentences. Make and new words. This type yes. of thing, yeah. yeah. And so it's very interesting that the Chinese word for tower is grass, plus clay, plus mankind, plus one mouth. Everyone's speaking one, one way, one language. Ah. Now, you gotta think about this. When you read the, the, the story of the Tower of Babel in, in scripture, it says, well, what was the tower made of? It was made of grass and clay to make bricks to make this tower. And that at the time, mankind was all speaking one, one language. language. These are the types of things you'll, you'll read in so you've Creation got, you've Magazine. you the history of Genesis. They're embedded in the ancient Chinese characters. Exactly. Interesting. And, and, and they would have known that. Why? And because there's, they it's came totally, from Babel. Yeah, it, it, if it was totally arbitrary, why would you have the word for tower be made up of such arbitrary uh, things such right. as this? So just remember, folks, if, if anyone has any type of racist attitudes, that clearly goes against what the Bible says, and God is not pleased with, with that attitude. That's right. Finding answers to questions about the origins debate, creation or evolution. When the results are in, which one is supported by scientific observations? Find out at creationontheweb.org. Creation scientists and researchers from around the world have contributed more than 5,000 articles, many of which appeared in leading creation's publications like Creation Magazine and the Journal of Creation over more than 30 years. A new daily front page article keeps web visitors informed about the latest breaking news in the creation evolution debate. When news breaks about the latest evolutionary ape man, or some major supposed evidence for evolution, check out creationontheweb.org for a Christian creationist response. Each weekend the website features a feedback article, a response to web visitors email feedback. Often the anti-creationist arguments in skeptics' emails are refuted in a detailed response by a CMI staff member. So in a very practical way, believers can see that the Bible, and particularly Genesis, can be defended against skeptics' arguments. The website includes an online store where you can browse through hundreds of the world's leading creationist books, DVDs, and related materials, all available to build up the faith of the believer. Got questions? Get answers at Creation on the Web. Dot org. Welcome back. This is the feedback section, the last uh, last part of this uh, this program. Um, I, I love the feedback section because it's 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 real people out there looking at things in Creation Magazine on our website and then responding to them often right. negatively. So here's one here: Creationists <laughs> use lowbrow tactics. Uh, and, and so I'll, I'll read our response to this person's uh, email that they sent in. Here's what they said. I have just read The Elusive Origin of Life by John V. Collier. Uh, and our response is, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> again, back to the person who wrote in. His argument is one that people are sick and tired of. And one of our guys wrote, they really need to see a doctor and go to bed earlier. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> The, then the person continues his letter. Scientists aren't sure about the exact mechanism of Genesis by random mutation, so therefore creationism must be right. That's, pretty, that's a pretty lowbrow way to argue a point. While flaws exist in most of the theories, uh, most of the present theories of random Genesis, it means random evolution, that kind of thing, that does not make the creationist argument right. So, okay, good point. We'll, we'll, and we'll summarize that a little bit more. Right. He continues. That theory is still more scientifically flawed than any other. The uh, creationist theory. The, the creationist theory. He's saying, the confusion scientists are having, uh, the confusion scientists are having lies in which of the many possible mechanisms for the origin of life is most probable. This person continues. So they're saying there's tons of different ways that the origin of life could have happened. Yes, and and this uh, this is responded to by Dr. Jonathan Sarfati, who's got a PhD in physical chemistry. He responds, I'm a scientist, a chemist even. And I see only crystal. Cl I see only crystal clarity in what the principles of real chemistry imply about the origin of life by chemical evolution. 
and then the person continues. It's not that they don't have a feasible theory for life arising from chance reactions. It's that they have many and must simply see which is the most supported by primeval evidence. Very okay, interesting. So, so the person's saying creationists, you know, when we're pointing out flaws in evolution, they're saying, okay, well, you know, that still doesn't mean you're right. And, and we believe that the origin of life theories that scientists have come up with are better explanations than there is a God. And uh, we're using lowbrow low brow tactics, which is actually an evolutionary term, by the way. What, uh, <laughs> because that's eight men with low it, brows. Um, what he's really getting at is, is we're, we're involved in a God of the gaps kind of a theology. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't understand the origin of life, therefore we invoke supernatural powers. That's not really scientific. Right, and they're saying they have multiple uh, options for how non-living chemicals could have come together and formed some kind of DNA or proto-DNA or some kind of code that's system, what they et cetera, say. et cetera. But it's interesting, I, I um, was doing some research for an article that I wrote on the website. Uh, the, the, the article is called, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, if you want all the details. And uh, what I pointed out is that there's an Origin of Life Foundation down in, in the United States, a secular uh, group, uh, offering $1 million through this, what they call the Gene Emergence Project, to anyone who can give a, a, a scientific explanation of where DNA could have come from. That's or, viable. Or, that's right. Yeah. No one's collected the million dollars yet. So this is an evolutionary organization that says, no, we don't have any explanations. We don't. And we'd be willing to pay somebody a million dollars if you can come up if with If you one. can come up with it. Now, this person huh. here, you know, he's heard about different explanations, but they don't have any viable uh, explanations. So, you know, when we go to, we're not a God of the Gaps uh, you know, organization. What we're saying is we know where in genetic information, well, we know where information comes from. Yes, in this area particularly, we're not just saying, well, God did it, so we're not going to investigate this at all. It's not, as you said, it's not a God of the gaps because we know that information always, always, always comes from intelligence. Right. You can't generate information through a random process. That's right. And if you look at the huge amounts of information required for life in our DNA, in the DNA of, of, of some imagined simple cell, a simple cell would still have to have a huge amount of complex coded information. That's right. Information always comes from intelligence. So when you look at the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God, it fits exactly with what science is telling us, with what information theory is telling us about where information comes from. Right. It's not a, we're not invoking anything supernatural. Information comes from intelligence. That's what the Bible and says. And evolutionists are actually involved in a gap, too, because if they don't have a, a way of explaining where information comes from, I mean, Here's an article, very recent, from online magazine, Scoop Independent News, and they're interviewing this uh, fellow here, David Deemer. He's a professor of biomolecular engineering and research professor of chemistry um, at the University of California. Okay. Now, he gets asked a very specific question. Um, this, uh, the interviewer, Susan Mazur, said, what do you think the origin of the gene is? This is his response. This, this guy's been involved in this for over 20 years of research. He says, I think genetic information more or less came out of nowhere by chance assemblages of short polymers. And he goes on to say, most people are open to the possibility that there are simpler molecules that we haven't discovered yet that could contain what we now call genetic information. Open to the possibility of things that we haven't discovered As yet. As in, we don't have any proof of it, okay. and he thinks information had arisen from basically nowhere. You wonder where he got his information about information theory, because we all know that information comes from intelligence. You it, walk along a beach and see Johnny Love Susie written there, you know the actions of the waves on the sand don't do that. Exactly, exactly. Well, we were talking about, of course, Babel and the nations today, and I think this is a good place to end off with this scripture here. This is Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And I say amen to that. Amen. Thank you.